Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagras, and today CD Projekt Red leaked 20 new cards from the upcoming min winter update for Gwent. So we've got 20 more cards on the collection, and this website basically shows cards that have been revealed. This is on the Play Gwent website, I'll have a link down below. But we're going to go through, have a wee chat about each card, and see what we think. So, if you like this video, do hit that thumbs up button. Now, in terms of the neutral card pool, no bronzes. Uh, we actually get some silvers and golds though. So first and foremost, we can see Port Cullis. Spawn a bronze or silver unit from your opponent's starting deck and boost it by two. Now, your starting deck is the deck that you build in the deck builder. So you're taking a card from your opponent, boosting it by two and playing it, but it's spawn. So you're not taking it from their deck as in you take their copy, you're generating your own copy. And ultimately, I don't think this card is very strong, uh, although it may be one for the new game mode. That seems to be what all of these uh, spawn cards are about. With that said, if you're going to make a deck where your entire objective is actually to play your opponent's cards, uh, including Avalak the Sage, then what we can do is we can run Portcullis, 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 along with Slave Driver, which we saw last time, spawn a bronze unit from your opponent's deck, uh, which is a three strength, so that you can then resurrect it with Pultis, uh, heal an ally and randomly split between five or resurrect a bronze unit so we then resurrect slave driver play more slave drivers and play more units from our opponent's deck basically if you wanted to play your opponent's deck with Avalak the Sage these two cards and portcullis you're, you're kind of you know you're, you're on you're on your way you're on your way maybe add a maybe Johnny into there for example and you'd be you'd be pretty happy so next up we have uh, Nivellen move all units on a row to random rows now some people might think like oh Nivellen uh, it will synergize with movement, but bear in mind that movement decks already have Sheldon's Skags. Uh, so unless Sheldon is changed, Sheldon is strictly better, because Sheldon, he moves all units on the row you place him on to random rows, but he also boosts for each movement you, uh, each unit moved. So typically in Squirtel, you'd be running Sheldon's Skags. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure when Nivellen is going to see play, in all honesty. Uh, I guess situations where moving units around in rows would be useful, decks which need that. Uh, it could potentially be beneficial. It is a neutral card, it is 10 strength, so, you know, it's alright. But I'm not entirely sure what decks you're going to be playing this on. With that said, you know, they've mentioned these kind of row limits, so potentially, once we understand row limits a bit better, Novellan actually might be a lot stronger than I'm saying. So next up, we have Trial of the Grasses. Alchemy, special, so this is an alchemy card. Deal 10 damage to a unit unless it's a Witcher. So if it's not a Witcher, it doesn't take any damage. But deal 10 damage to a unit. If it survives, boost it to 25 power. So not boost it by 25 power, boost it to 25 power. So any unit with more than 10 strength, you can use Trial of the Grasses on, and it will bring it up to 25. But if it's a Witcher, it doesn't have to be above 10 strength. Any Witcher, you can use this on and boost it to 25. So it does synergize with Witchers. Uh, it may be useful, you know, there's a lot of low value witchers that this could be a really strong card with but bear in mind you know you have to have that synergy if you don't have a witcher uh this is 10 damage right you can use it on an opponent and kill an opponent's card and you get 10 damage so it's a little bit situational uh but it'll be interesting to see what witches there are once we have the full collection and work out exactly where this card is going to be particularly uh useful but best case scenario it's 25 worst case scenario it's dead but you can just use it for 10 damage so next up we have here, Siri Nova, Sintra Witcher Doom. So here's a Witcher, <laughs> you can boost her to 25. Except that if you have exactly two copies of each bronze card in your starting deck, so the deck you build the deck builder, set power to 25. So what this means is that you need to have 26 cards in your deck minimum, uh, because otherwise you won't be able to have two of each bronze, uh, unless you want to take out a silver or gold, which I wouldn't advise. Uh, alternatively, I, you could run more cards, but that's it. And then when you play her, you get a 25 point gold, but you basically make your deck a lot less consistent. Because at the moment, you know, you've got about 10, uh, sorry, 15 gold slots. You've got, sorry, 15 bronze slots, which means you need to find five bronze cards and you can run three copies of each. Whereas with this situation, you'd need to run a 26 card deck, which means you have 16 bronze cards. And so eight, eight with two copies. Um, so you're bringing your consistency down quite a lot just for a 25 point gold and when some other golds are often quite close to that number of points I'm not entirely sure why you would choose to run this it's definitely fun in terms of deck building and you know it's going to probably lead to, lead to some creativity but I'm not sure if it's going to be you know tier one for example I don't think this is necessarily going to be a top tier neutral card so moving on we have monsters and uh we have some lovely sirens here as as you can can see here and this summons moonlight 
We have no idea what Moonlight does. There is a CD Projekt Red employee called Moonlight, so maybe we can use this and find him. That would be maybe useful, but no idea what Moonlight does other than the fact that it strengthens werewolves and uh, alpha werewolves will then spawn small wolves. There was a image of a card that was like a hand with a moon behind it from Chi China. So some kind of Chinese Gwent leak. I'm not entirely sure where it came from. Uh, and on that, it did say that Moonlight could be a boon or a hazard. But yesterday on the Gwentleman talk show, uh, which you can watch at twitch.tv forward slash Gwentleman or on youtube.com on the YouTube channel for Gwentleman. I was on it, obviously. Uh, Berger, who is the community manager for Gwent, basically said that they weren't quite done with Moonlight. So ultimately, anything that we know about Moonlight is kind of inaccurate. And uh, we'll have to wait and see. So next we have uh, Ru Ruin, I'm going to say Ruin, and uh, don't you wish someone would hug you the way Ruin is hugging this small child thing? Strengthen all your insectoid and incursed units by one wherever they are. So I love this card, I think this card is really neat. I think it encourages you to make a curse deck or encourages you, encourages you to make an insectoid deck. And because it doesn't matter where they are, it doesn't matter where you play them. Uh, when you play this, this is, you know, always going to be a viable card to play. And bear in mind, you know, we have seen a lot of cursed units. Werewolves, for example, these are cursed units. The Strigger here is a cursed unit. There's quite a few cursed units um, in in monsters. And, and the Insectoid synergy, I think, is interesting to see how Arrakis and Arrakis Bear Moths, how they maybe come into their own with more Insectoids. So that's something that I'd like to see. And I think this is a really great card for that. So, I, you know, I'm really happy about this card. It's also got a really creepy art, which is always nice. Next up, we have Goliath Ogroid. Boost self by six. Wherever, wh wherever, wherever, whenever. Whenever this unit is damaged, deal two damage to self. So basically when you play him, he's a 16. But the reason he isn't base strength 16 is because there's certain cards which deal damage based uh, on the base strength of units in your in your hand. For example, uh, here we go, Spear, for example. De deal damage equal to the base power of a bronze or silver unit in your hand. So if they made the uh, Goliath a 16, that's going to be a little bit insane. So he is a 10, but he boosts up to 6. But then whenever he's damaged, he takes 2 additional damage. So it's a 16 point silver. Uh, if you don't get hit by it, 16 points is decent. But honestly, I don't think it's enough. I think his condition is uh, too detrimental. I think the fact of the matter is you're gonna have to play him right at the end and often there are better cards that you want to save for your last play than a 16 strength silver so for me i would say that goliath's a bit meh based on the current state of gwent but you know i might be totally wrong and ogroids might rule the day so we'll have to kind of wait and see and then next up we have a whispering hillock relict leader spawn and organic card so they have showcased some of the new leaders whispering hillock was this uh Thing during the crow's quest it was like this hill and they she wanted you to bring her like a horse and sacrifice it basically spoilers uh but th this quite early on in, in witcher 3 so that's what the whispering hillock is and uh yeah spawn an organic card i don't know how useful that is it really depends on the organic cards uh the, the chat in general is quite unhappy with these spawning leaders because there is another one that i'll show you later on but spawning leaders and the fact that they seem a bit you know less flavorful than the other leaders they don't seem to have archetypes for example but ultimately you can make your own archetypes so they are flexible in that regard and it may be that they're really good like i said they said in the new game mode i don't know why, why all this spawning is going to be fun but be useful but maybe it'll just be fun and you know fun is fun is not necessarily a bad thing so next up we have nilfgaard and we actually have a new bronze unit you can see here the eight strength slave hunter charm a bronze enemy with three power or less and charm is effectively what succubus does and muzzle does is you take the unit from your opponent's side of the board and you place it on your side of the board so at max value this is a 14 point play if you take a three point unit but honestly those three point units could also have additional effects you know maybe like a, if you damaged a uh, kidwenny what is it called a kidwenny siege support if you damage one of them down to three you can then take it for yourself because they just have to have three power and you can damage units to get there so i think slave hunter is a really solid card uh, and being able to disrupt your opponent's strategies is always good but with the limitation of requiring your opponent to play something small that might be a problem in big unit decks. So it depends kind of what your opponent is get again, what kind of opponent you're against. But, you know, worst case scenario, this is eight points. And eight points is eight points. So I think Slave Hunter is actually a really interesting card. And I think it'll see some play. So next up, we have Reemdi. Reemdi. I'm probably saying this wrong. Spawn a bronze Nilfgaardian soldier. So only Nilfgaardian soldiers. But bear in mind, you know, Slave Hunter here is a soldier... Um, there's probably more soldiers, for example. I'd imagine, like, uh, 
Nausicaa brigades and you know Imperial brigades they're probably soldiers so it really depends on how good the Nilfgaard soldiers are as to whether this card sees play you know all of these spawn cards it really comes down to averages if the average Nilfgaardian soldier is you know a decent number of points then Vream is good but if not then probably won't see competitive play and maybe limited to the new game mode so next up we have Shillard and Shillard is an officer truce Draw a card from both decks. So truce means if your opponent has not passed. So we'll see that on uh, Vilgefortz, for example. You can't burn your opponent's units if they've passed. So draw a card from both decks, keep one, and give the other to your opponent. So this is quite interesting in that you, you get one of your cards and you get one of their cards, and you can decide which one you want to keep and which one you want to get rid of. Worst case scenario, you get nine points, you both draw a card, you see what their card is. Uh, so it's kind of like Albrich in that regard. You know, Albrich, you both draw a card and you see. But Shillard is better because you can actually see what their card is. And if it becomes a situation where you draw their gold and your bronze, you could take their gold and give them a bronze. So I think Shillard is a very, very strong card. This is something that you guys should be a bit scared of. Um, and, you know, I think it'll see a lot of play. Bear in mind, you know, the, the requirement is that you haven't passed. But a lot of the time, you know, there's, there's plenty of situations where you're playing cards where you haven't passed. And I think this is a very strong card. So now we have Northern Realms, and in Northern Realms we have a new bronze, Cursed Knight. Transform a cursed ally into a copy of this unit to armor. So he's got a little bit of armor, and you can use him to turn, say, the Cursed Mage, the Tormented Mage, from a two-strength unit into an eight-strength unit. So you could play the Tormented Mage, you could look at the top two, uh, sorry, look at two bronze spells or items from your deck and play one. So you could tutor out a item or spell, and then on top of that you could then play this guy, eight points, turn this two point unit into an, another eight point unit, which means that you're getting a bonus six points, making this a 14 point play. Um, and I think a cursed archetype for Northern Realms seems to be something that could be potentially quite powerful. You know, Vincent is cursed, but I, you probably wouldn't want to, want, wouldn't want to transform him. Um, but it does say cursed ally. So actually, you know, uh, Kian is cursed as well. So you could play Kian and then transform him. It doesn't say, you know, bronze or silver. So you have kind of a few options. And I think, I think like I said, cursed is going to be quite strong. Next up, we have Vandergrift. Curse. They look at Cursed Unit. Damage all enemies by one. If a unit is destroyed, apply Ragnarug to its row. And it doesn't say that this only happens once. So if it happens to be a situation where your opponent has three one strength units in different rows, you could potentially basically have Ragnarug with a seven strength body plus one damage to all of your opponent's other units. Like, Vandergrift is insanely strong. Uh, this sounds like such a great card. It doesn't hit your unit, so you're only damaging your opponent, and you have that added vote added benefit of attrition damage. Um, and, you know, the more units that your opponent plays, the more points that you get. Uh, but bear in mind that the more units that your opponent plays, often that means that the round's gone on quite a while. So you have to kind of balance this up of whether you'd rather have a lot of damage or whether you'd like to play it early and kill a one strength in order to get the attrition points of Ragnarug. So the card kind of keeps itself in check a little bit. Um, and I really, really like this card. Then we have Ada, Leader, Cursed. Spawn a bronze or silver cursed unit. So this will be from any faction, but ultimately, you know, if we're going for this cursed archetype, cursed units, uh, for example, I believe Morkvarg is a cursed unit. Uh, we've also got Udalric is a cursed unit. We saw some new cursed units in uh, Skellige, for example. Um, so there are cursed units. I think Darren is a cursed unit. Yeah, Darren is a cursed unit. Um, so there's quite a few cursed units to choose from, and they're generally quite powerful. So actually, although this is a spawn effect, I think Ada actually might see play as the leader for a cursed deck. You just have to be a little bit careful of when you play her in terms of the benefits that you'll get. Whereas the organic unit with Whispering Hillock, you know, we might have to kind of wait and see. Organic units, typically stuff like Lacerate, for example, is a organic unit. I believe uh, Blood Curdling Roar is an organic unit. It really depends what has this tag. Um, and actually it could be that Whispering Hillock is quite good now that I think about it. Uh, and Ada is actually pretty decent because they've got a slightly more narrow pool, or in the case of Cursed, a very strong pool to draw from. So you're likely to see good value. And you already have Cursed synergies within Northern Realms now. So I actually think that people are overreacting a little bit to these leaders and people are saying they're boring and spawn and RNG. And I will do a video talking about RNG, but in general, I think that actually they're kind of interesting um, and it's, it's going to be good to see them. So now we come to Scoia'tael and we have this little elven scout. Spawn a bronze Scoia'tael unit that is not in your starting deck. So this is interesting. You have access to any bronze Scoia'tael unit that you don't want to play. 
which I think is a terrible card. Because ultimately when you're building a deck, when I'm building a deck, I'm putting in the cards that work with my deck, that synergize with my deck. And this guy's like, oh yeah, I see that you made a dwarf deck, so here have, you know, have some elves. Or I see that you've made, you know, a hand boosting deck, so I'm not gonna give you a hand boosting card. It doesn't, it doesn't seem great. It seems very, very counterintuitive and I'm not really sure why anyone would want to do that. If you have a, you know, a differing opinion, let me know. But ultimately I think Elven Scout is a bit bleh. It's a bit meh. Actually, I think all of these bronzes are a bit meh. Half Elf Hunter, Panther, Elven Scout. They're all, they're, they're all a bit meh to me. Anyhow, next up we have Mahakam Horn. Choose one, spawn a bronze or silver dwarf, which is always good in a dwarf deck, or strengthen a unit by seven. And um, bear in mind that strengthened by seven unit can then go to the graveyard. And while that strengthened by seven unit is in the graveyard, you then have Pauli Dalberg here. Resurrect a non-support bronze dwarf. So you could strengthen a dwarf, put it in your graveyard, and then you have the synergy with Pauli Dalbird uh, in order to resurrect it. And you can guarantee your draw of Pauli if you run Bruver Hoog as your leader. So this card is guaranteed. There are a lot of cards in uh, Scoia'tael that can target draw special cards, because, you know, Scoia'tael has the uh, Scoia spell or Spellatel ar archetype. So I actually think that these two cards in synergy is going to be, they're going to be really strong. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying out a dwarf deck. So last but not least, we have the lovely Skellige. And here we have a clan protector, soldier, hey may. Play a bronze item from your deck. So it doesn't say random, which means I think this is targeted draw of bronze items. And uh, bone talisman is a bronze item. And actually I think this is all designed basically to go with this beast synergy and this bear synergy, which we'll get onto in a second. But clan protector, you can then target draw your bone talismans. Bone talismans you can then use to resurrect beasts and bears. So you get a bunch of bears on your board and you know, bear with me with this and you might think why why jag why do i want all of these bears on my board this is getting unbearable <laughs> I'll, I'll stop now uh, but they did actually also showcase olav beast cursed deal 10 damage to self reduce the damage inflicted by two for each beast you played this match this match and he can be renewed so it doesn't have to be this round it just has to be this match so you know we can play our beast masters we get some beasts out and you only have to bear in mind you only have to play five beasts in order for this to be 20 points right so you only have to play five beasts so you can play a bunch of beasts uh this round you can always play your bone talismans so you could maybe tutor out those beasts I'm, I'm wondering if you resurrect a beast if it counts as a beast played i would have thought that it does because when you put a card onto the board that would be it played um so if you, if you happen to maybe not find your Berserkers to damage and turn into bears, you can just resurrect bears. And then that would synergize maybe with Ceres, for example. So we can have this like Ceres resurrect bear deck. And I, I think it's going to be really exciting. Um, and I think this card is really interesting. Also the fact that, you know, you can target other items with it. So you've also got the bronze items we saw previously, uh, spear and I believe the shield wyvern scale shield so we can target draw these should you want them uh spear deal damage equal to the base power of a bronze or silver unit in your hand and there are a lot of decently um powered bronze and silver units you know Udoric is a 12 uh jenge i believe is a 10 dimon uh what's her name anna anna dimon there's a 12 strength unit basically that, that this would synergize with and you can target draw it uh, boost unit by the initial power of a unit in your hand. Actually, this is insane, right? Because Skellige has Resurrect. So if you're boosting a unit, oh no, it's not strength and it's boost. So you could, you, but you could boost the unit by points and shoot her out these, uh, these wyvern scales. I mixed up boost and strength in there for a second. But ultimately, ultimately, I do think that uh, Clan Protector as targeted draw for item will see play. And as we get more better items, it'll just see more play. So last but not least, we have Moonlight. Uh, this person on this card is apparently Moonlight from CD Projekt Red, so another employee card. And this card has such cute art. Look at him, he's holding all the little piggies. Giant boar, and it's another beast. Destroy a random ally, then boost self by 10. So it's a risk. It's a risk. You know, you could play the uh, you could play the beast master, for example, and have a, a 1 strength and an 11 strength, then play giant boar and try and high roll your way to, you know, it hitting the 1. But ultimately, it's a beast, so it synergizes with Olaf, for example. Uh, it gives you removal, and if you can use it to target out those small units, then you then have the uh, the boar, so you then you know get that that bonus and uh, the ten point boost. You know it's, it's seventeen. If you hit a one, for example, it's actually it's, it's sixteen plus. Um, but ultimately, it's an interesting card because you also have that beast synergy, uh, and then maybe you know you could look for resurrects and that sort of thing. Uh, and bear in mind also that this uh, this resurrect unit, you could also use it to heal and strengthen. So if someone is damaging your bears, you could use a bone talisman to heal one and strengthen it. And then on the next round, you resurrect it for more. Um, so I think Skellige Bear Deck is going to be awesome. And I can't wait to play one. But 
that brings us to the end of the list of new cards. Uh, so let me know what you guys think in the comments below in terms of bear decks and beast decks. You know, what about the new leaders, the uh, Ada and Whispering Hillock, I believe is, is the two of them. Uh, what about Shillard? I think Shillard is such a strong card. And I think that Vandergrift is such a strong card. These cards I'm actually really looking forward to playing because they're going to be nasty. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you have any, you know, guesses of what Moonlight might do, let us know in the comments below. Um, and if you've enjoyed this video, you can always hit that thumbs up button and leave a like. Uh, and if you enjoy this content, you can always subscribe for more. There will be a Christmas special this month, so keep an eye out for that. And obviously, when we get more cards from the collection, I will be back once again talking about them. Um, so please come back. Let me know what you guys think. I love having a chat with you guys, and I love seeing other people's perspectives about cards. Because, like, some things people might think are really strong, and I might think are really weak. And it's always interesting to have a discussion as to why. But beyond that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you can always subscribe. You can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jagoras, and you can follow me on Twitter, at Jagoras, uh, for more sexy leaks. Actually, I don't post leaks on Twitter, but, you know, still. <laughs> I just wanted to hold the leak. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye!